Hello, welcome. Recently, Yuzu implemented a feature called ASTC Recompression. For those wondering about this feature, it is a texture compression method that reduces the size of textures without compromising their visual quality. In practice, now you will be able to run Switch games on graphics cards with 2GB of VRAM and integrated GPUs without experiencing constant emulator crashes or suffering a significant loss in visual quality. In today's video, we will test the game The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom on a GPU with 2GB of VRAM compared to another one with 4GB of VRAM. Additionally, we will explore all the compression methods of ASTC recompression to assess if there are any performance gains. If you would like to see more videos focusing on integrated GPUs and 2GB of VRAM, please leave a comment so I can evaluate if it's worth creating that type of content. But before we proceed with the content, I would like to ask you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to receive the latest news about the world of emulators. Currently, only 3% of our viewers are subscribed, so help us grow even more. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. Before we begin our tests, let's introduce the hardware used. First, let's talk about the processors. In the PC with 2GB of VRAM, we have an Intel Core i7-8700K processor, while on the other side, we have an i5-10400F processor. We will use userbenchmark.com as a reference, which shows that, on average, the i7 is only 8% superior to the i5 in terms of gaming performance. All the details and references will be available in the description so that you can draw your own conclusions. Regarding the GPUs, we are using a GTX 1050 in the PC with 2GB of VRAM, noting that it is the basic version, not the TI version. On the other side, we are using a GTX 970 SC, where SC stands for Super Clock. It is a version equivalent to the newer TI versions. Since we don't have specific data for this card, we will compare it to the normal version of the GTX 970, which has a gaming performance 41% higher than the 2GB GTX 1050. Does this difference also reflect in emulation? Before we proceed, we need to understand how the Yuzu team recommended that we use the texture compression modes. They suggest using the BC1 mode if you are using a GPU with less than 4GB of VRAM. If you are playing with many textures or high-resolution mods and your GPU has between 4 and 6 GB of VRAM, the BC3 mode is recommended. Finally, if your GPU has more than 6 GB of VRAM, it is recommended to use the uncompressed mode. Initially, I tried to perform the test with both GPUs using uncompressed textures, but that proved to be impossible. If you only play the game, it's fine, but when trying to record the gameplay, the VRAM usage of the GTX 1050 exceeds 2GB, making the game completely unstable and unplayable. Therefore, to ensure that everything works properly, we will only use the compression method that saves the most VRAM, called BC1. In our first comparison, we will test the open world of the game Tears of the Kingdom, with only the FPS++ mod, on version 1.1.1 of the game. On the GTX 1050, we will use the BC1 mode, while on the GTX 970, we will use the uncompressed mode. The first observation we make is that the frame time using BC1 is much more unstable, perhaps due to the time required to decompress the textures. Additionally, the CPU usage is also higher when using the BC1 mode, even though the i7 has better performance than the i5. The VRAM usage of the GTX 970 is only at 62.5%, indicating that this card still has enough VRAM to handle the current mods. We have not reached a consensus on whether texture compression negatively affects visual quality, as the GTX 1050 is experiencing cloudy weather while the GTX 970 has sunny weather. Let's proceed to a second test, keeping the same weather conditions. For this second test, we chose Kakariko Village, which is an area of the game with a high density of elements. Now we can confirm that the frame time using BC1 is indeed more unstable, and this can result in a delay in response to your commands within the game. Some smoke effects also appear to be less dense and simpler than uncompressed version. Personally, I can notice a difference in the ground lighting, which seems to be sharper on the GTX 970, which does not use texture compression. When we move to an area with fewer people and elements, we can see that even with only 2GB of VRAM, it is possible to have a satisfactory experience with a low-performance GPU. However, now the difference in ground lighting, for example, is indisputable. I'm sure those who own such a GPU are already aware that they won't be able to play most games at maximum quality. 
Therefore, the conclusion we can draw from this test is that yes, it is now possible to use Yuzu on a 2GB RAM GPU. If you want more tests with our low-end GPU, don't forget to leave a comment. Our video is not over yet. Let's set aside the GTX 1050 and compare if there are any performance gains when using ASTC recompression. Let's take a stroll around Kakariko Village and observe the performance in each of the three compression scenarios. We are using the same PC that I used to record all the gameplay, only with different compression methods. In terms of performance, using texture compression does not result in any significant gain. When using BC1, the effects are more subtle, as if there is a cut in the textures that have transparencies. The quality of the textures can also be noticed, where the higher the compression level, the more opaque they become. However, I believe this won't hinder the gameplay experience too much. As the difference is only noticeable when we see the version side by side. There is a subtle savings in VRAM usage and also in allocated RAM. Overall, all measurements are practically the same. In conclusion, we can say that it is possible to enjoy emulation of Nintendo Switch games even with a 2GB RAM GPU. Although texture compression does not bring significant performance gains, it is a viable option to save memory resources. If you are ready to explore the world of Switch games on your PC, even with a more modest GPU, now is the ideal time. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to leave your comments and suggestions for future content. Until the next video.